It's a friend from Jakarta. She says, tell, tell Dirk I said hi. Oh. So I said I will. So Because <laughs> she was just sending me a message and I said, I'm in the recording with you. So no worries. <laughs> no worries. So good, get, good, get back to business. <laughs> tell Dirk I said hi. That's all. <laughs> okay. Um, so Thank just, you. Uh, <laughs> we have fans. We have fans. Yeah, at least a few. So... Let's go back to business. Robots eating our jobs. Yes, that's correct. Okay, just to be sure. Let's start the recording. In front of me on my computer screen is sitting the wonderful, the amazing, the prepared up to the roof as usual uh, and competitive Sebastian Sebastian are you uh, today doing fantastically well too actually I have to be honest <laughs> with you Doug today today Sebastian the original is not here what you have in front of you when you, the person you have in this recording is Sebastian's clone 393 it's one of his robots <laughs> it is one of his robots I knew it I always knew it. And yes, all the clones and Sebastian are doing fine and they are ready for today's debate. <laughs> so you're, you're more or less like a clone collective, like the Borg, you know? I am not going to tell you how many are operating, otherwise it may freak out some people. But this, the number that you have in front of you is the serial number 393. You can see this. It's just <laughs> on my neck. Are you watching things like Game of Thrones or The West Wing? Anything I like that? I got bored of Game of Thrones after okay. five minutes. I'm sorry. Uh, you didn't stick a lo uh, around long enough until you saw the first naked woman in that in that video, right? What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, not boring. Let's show the recording. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can we can edit that out, Sebastian. So uh, <laughs> you don't can, have to edit it out. <laughs> no, um, the the reason I'm asking is, um, did you see? Did you watch Westworld? No. Why? Because Westworld is uh, a, an, is a TV show, an HBO series actually, about a future in which we are able to create robots that are indistinguishable from humans. So robots that are very, very close. And Westworld plays in a, in a let's say, amusement park, like a, 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 ma a manufactured fantasy world, the Westworld, uh, which is in the Wild West, where... Uh, real people w visit the park to, well, entertain themselves with robots who don't realize that they are just robots. It's a very interesting show. A lot of uh, food for thought in that show. Okay, I'll check it out. Uh, I'll have one of, my, one of the clones watch it as I do other things. What is today's motion, Doug? Today's motion is robots eating our jobs. It is inevitable. Did I say that right? Inevitable? Inevitable. In inevitable. Uh, that's one of those words very hard for us Germans. By the flip of a coin, that's the motion I'm defending. And I have the pleasure to start our argument. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues for the motion. Will robots eat our jobs? Of course they will. And this has been something, to be fair... That has been said in the past. So we had a few waves of industrialization already. And in those waves, every time, and that's probably an argument that Sebastian is going to use, people were afraid that the machines that were invented will eat our jobs. This time is different. Uh, and it's different in many ways. So in the past, actually, every wave of industrialization brought more jobs, not less. So the scares were not warranted. Why? Because in the end, the machines were not able to be better than humans. The first wave of industrialization, machines were stronger than humans. Fair enough. People were still uh, faster. The second wave of industrialization, machines got faster than humans. So they were stronger and faster. Still, people were creative. People were smarter. And this is where this current wave of industrialization comes in. The robots we are about to invent are not only stronger, faster, 
they they actually started getting into smart territory. They start to be creative. They start to be almost likable. And at the same time, they start to be cheap to create. And this is a deadly combination for our current system where we basically exploit human intelligence, human creativity, and the human presence at a low cost. So we can replace all of that with, with machines which have the, who have the upper side when it comes to health, uh, reliability, speed, strength, what have you. So that is my, uh, the reason why I um, argue for the motion. Indeed, robots will eat our jobs. It's inevitable and we need to find a plan B fast. Now it's Sebastian's turn. As I said at the beginning of this podcast, this is Sebastian's clone 393 speaking. Why this is important? Well, that allows Sebastian to do other things while the clone is actually in this podcast. So robots are great because they free up time for humans to do other things in parallel. Just as you mentioned, so I'm not going to go into the details of this. The past progress has not decreased the number of jobs. Quite the contrary, you've had an increase in the number of jobs. In fact, over the past 50 years, women have started to work when they never used to work in the past um, of the history of, of mankind. And yes, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all these new concepts make it seem scary, make it seem that technology, because it advances perhaps at an exponential rate, will make it so that jobs will be completely eaten away. I don't think that's the case. As I said, these robots, these smart robots that you described, will free up time to do other things, things which initially we don't consider productive. And maybe that, and I will expand on this in my second section, that notion of productivity needs to be redefined, needs to be uh, understood in a new context. Let me give a few examples. Caring for the elderly, caring for old people, doing yoga or fitness, makeup artists, these kind of jobs are not very productive. And uh, if you infer from that, we can talk about the entire entertainment industry or playing games like chess. Yes, computers are better than humans at playing chess, but still you will have competitions because people will want to see humans faced against other humans at sports or entertainment. People will want to feel the human touch. Even if you have robots, there will be the need for that connection that you cannot get with a machine, whether it's a software, whether it's hardware. So this is the reason why robots will continue to eat our jobs, but jobs will be created in new areas. So it goes hand in hand. It's not incompatible. So this is why I don't believe it is inevitable that ro robots will eat all our jobs. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. Hey, Clone393. Let me just pick up what you left us with. First off, you made the motion smaller by saying it's not inevitable that robots eat off all our jobs. That's not the motion. That's not what we argue about. It, we argue about robots are eating our jobs. And they do. Let me give you a couple of numbers to digest. In the States, the United States of America, 1.7 million, 1.7 million, not thousands, not hundreds of thousands, 1.7 million people earn a living as truck drivers. You know what happens next? Next step on the ladder to robots eating our jobs are self-driving trucks. And you know who's, uh, who's not earning a living anymore with driving trucks on the streets? Well, those 1.7 million people. And if they dream of a job as a cab driver, guess what? That's not going to work either. So robots are eating our jobs. And all those people, they will not start careers in caring for the elderly. And they will not make a living out of playing professional chess they will simply have no job anymore. It's easy to think of these jobs. People kind of realize that self-driving cars are coming. We have robots in factories and all that. But let me extend that list. Lawyers, doctors, 
cooks yes cooks are the next in this because most of the recipes and most of the cooking in professional cooking can be fully automated and chances are the food is actually better in the end than what the cook would have produced and it's safer too and uh, a robotic cook well doesn't need a vacation doesn't need to take off nothing of that so i'm not saying that we will have no jobs left in the end but i say that it's not enough jobs to really sustain a whole society that means we need to find a plan b we need to do something different that may be universal base income or or other ideas that are around maybe maybe taxing robots is an option that you can take some advantage of the value that's created or other ideas that are around But the times where everyone can be in a job and make a living out of that job is actually already over. Because the only ones uh, really in work these days are the ones that are not yet replaceable. And now on to Sebastian. Geographic pockets, specific jobs will indeed disappear. I agree with you. And it's going to be tough for these people. Now, the trend I'm looking at is more general. I'm looking overall. I think there's going to be an increase in jobs nonetheless. But yes, truck drivers will suffer. Yes, some professions like cashiers at supermarket will suffer. And this, is, makes it, this makes it all the more important for lifelong education. Because people who are 50 or 60 today, they're not going to learn a new job. But if we have real policies around education across your life, then it makes it easier to gradually shift whenever it's necessary. It's funny you mentioned lawyers. There was an article in the New York Times, and it showed how AI was helping assisting with routine work. It was not replacing lawyers. It was assisting them. In fact, when they looked at the uh, billing rate of lawyers, it went from $400 for one specific case per hour, and the guy today charges $1,100 per hour. So he is, his time is even more valuable because he needs this human understanding of law using the assistance of AI. So it's not incompatible. And I want to share a very small story very quickly. 2003, I remember vividly. It's when I, I started working roughly. And PowerPoint 2003 came out. And it was a complete change with the previous versions of PowerPoint. And I was scared. Why? Because I was very good at creating PowerPoints before 2003. And I thought with that new software, with a, with a ribbon menu, that everyone would create fantastic presentations. Turns out they don't know how to create a narrative. They don't know even with the best robots, the best software to create interesting stuff with nicely presented presentations. No robot will actually do the work for you in that case. And I realized, again, there is still a lot of value in being able to think. So yes, we, will may see, we, may, we may see shifts in the, in the decades to come, and I'm very eager to see what will come out of machine learning. But still, I, I don't see this coming that rapidly. We can have another debate in 10 years or 20 years. I want to finish with one aspect. A job in French is called travail, and travail comes from Latin, which is tripalium. Tripalium was an instrument of torture. Right? The origin of the word in French is torture. It was these tables where you attach to animals, you know, like, strung out like this way and, and, and humans for, as part of torture. And this is where I think we need to shift the mindset from a productive economy based on forcing people to do things, right? And I, I want to come back on this aspect of indeed caring for the elderly. And what's wrong with a truck driver becoming a caregiver in a, in a nursing home or a retirement village, whatever it is, it is possible to, I think for anyone to acquire these notions, these skills of caring for others, a truck driver, if he's fit enough, can help in a hospital. Uh, I think there are, there are enough opportunities there. So I give a few examples here with lawyers, the truck drivers, with even with PowerPoint in 2003, which I think make it very apparent that even ro robots are killing our jobs in some areas. Overall, it is not an inevitable trend. We will have uh, ways to subside, to survive. Final statements. Dirk, let's hear it. Oh, Sebastian, I'm not arguing that people will have nothing to do. After all, you know, no one is drawing pictures on your walls anymore as they used to do in ancient Rome and Greece. Still, there are people out there who clearly paint pictures with hands. 
yet they don't make a living out of that. And that's going to be the truth. Uh, if you have all those 1.7 million truck drivers all of a sudden taking care of the elderly, they're not making a living out of that. That's is not a job. That's an occupation. That's something they do. Maybe a calling even. I would argue for thinking about a world in which we don't work for our living. Think about a world in which we can decide what we like to spend our time with. And that may be that we even drive people around just because we like doing it or that we take care of someone or cook. And that might even be a luxury. But it's not the same thing as having a full-blown work job-driven economy like we have right now. And I really think robots this time eat our jobs. Sebastian. Seems we agree that we have to opt for universal income to fight the domination of robots, um, and indeed, I think this this was the whole point about talking about jobs and work, not as a productive economy, as we understand it today, or as something which is obligated on on something we have to do because we need to earn a living. So I think this is the interesting shift of the debate that we're we're, we're experiencing both of us here. I think in a similar fashion to ebooks. I know it's not exactly related, but it, it talks about. A similar trend where digital automation and ease of access to, to services and products seem to replace the old economy. Ebooks were supposed to replace all books. And what we see, there's actually a reversal right? the, uh, of trend in some countries. People go back to paper books. So I think there is an analogy here with robots likewise. It may be suboptimal for us to use humans, as you were talking about drivers, but people will still want to do that, even if it's suboptimal, because there's pleasure. And that notion of well-being is not captured yet very well, I think, in the way we measure economy today. So maybe this, in, in a way, we agree um, on, the, on that aspect of maybe shifting the definition of the economy. I'm not saying you're winning. I'm saying we, I'm, I'm just saying it's not incompatible of robots eating some of the jobs and finding a way to redefine what, what it means in terms of working nowadays or in the future. That was it for uh, today's debate. So, dear listener, as mentioned earlier, please head over to our website if you have a minute and let us know on the voting buttons on the episode what you think. Is it inevitable that robots eat our jobs or not? Just click there on the voting thingy, give us a thumbs up or thumbs down, signaling whether you agree or disagree with the motion. And with that, I thank clone number 393 of Sebastian for yet another amazing, wonderful, fun debate. Clone 393, thank you in return. It was equally, equally enjoyable. And uh, Sebastian, the original, has already made aware of that experience. <laughs> All right. I'm thank thinking you. of killing his job, by the way. I don't think he's that useful anymore. I think I'm going to take over. Maybe a good idea. And uh, Sebastian, the original Sebastian, then can go to the beach while you earn the dollars. Well, we don't know where he is at the moment. At the beach, probably. At probably. some unknown beach, drinking some undisclosed cocktail. As far as I know, he doesn't drink alcohol. But uh, fair enough. It can be a mocktail. I'm, yeah. I'm drinking no alcohol, too. So mocktails are equally enjoyable when okay, taken cool. in on the beach. <laughs> oh, don't get distracted. Vote on the website to, de to debate.net and go and rate us on iTunes. Thank you and see you next time. <laughs> so you're not saying I'm winning, but you say I'm right. That's good enough for me. <laughs> I'm saying we are both right. We are both right. I'm yeah, saying we're I both think... right in the, in the, in the, in the conclusion that it, it makes us come to. You're saying robots are killing our job. I'm saying it's not the case, but we come to the same conclusion, which is probably we need to consider the fact that work is not just about work in the way yeah. we understand it today. I... But if money was not involved, then we'd probably be doing either the same thing or other things, Yeah. which could be qualified as a job, except we're not doing this because we're forced to do it to earn a living. And I think that's, that's the key shift we're experiencing. When we had our first first round of industrialization, machines became stronger than humans. So until then, actually most of the work has been done, most of the heavy lifting, if you will, has been done by humans. And all of a sudden machines were much stronger. They outperformed us heavily. What happened then? For instance, we did things like creating gyms 
people are going to the gym now. Uh, that was unheard of, you know, before before we had machines to do all the heavy work then, and people had to do the shoveling and carrying around. No, People would have just uh, thought you're, you're mental if you would have suggested to, to create a place where people can go and pay money to carry around weights. I think something similar will happen when, uh, when we have AIs and robots taking over. All of a sudden, everything that we can do to flex our minds becomes like a luxury, something we do for pleasure. And the question then is, what is the gym of the next generations, if you will? I imagine that people will do interesting stuff, that we will see an uptake in the arts maybe, that we, we have jobs where it's expected that this is really a human person that uh, you interact with just because, not because you need to, because you want to. I agree with you with one caveat. I, I think there will be fairly niche, at least, or, or fairly slow movement for people to start doing things which are creative. I think the majority of people will continue to do what they're used to doing. Uh, and this is why education or training, or at least expanding your mind for anyone to do anything they want, is going to be critical. And until that happens, I don't think people will actually stop doing what they do, especially if what if their job implies working with, with other human beings. I think well, people will will not be able to go away from wanting to connect. We're social animals. They will want to connect with someone else. <laughs> Look, what the heck is this? <laughs> I think you just got, you got surprised at your own words and your own <laughs> business of your attack. <laughs> Are you a real human today, also? Yeah, are, we doing, also are we having like a clone-to-clone -clone discussion? A clone-to-clone -clone discussion. Yeah, that's, that's probably what we do. <laughs> <laughs>